So 33% of homes in the UK do not have access to a private driveway. And that's actually around 9 million homes. And for EV adoption, this crucially means they do not have access to cheap overnight charging. The Kia EV6 with an 84 kilowatt hour battery pack would only cost you £5.88 to charge at home, and that'll get you 350 miles of range. Compare that to the 60p charging at Lamppost in London, and that'll cost you £50.40. There's a huge difference between how much it costs to charge. I'm down in Hemel Hempstead, specifically at the Apsley Marina, to look at what Union EV charging are doing. Now here, the residents don't have their own private driveways. EV charging is quite tricky because of running cables, but these chargers give a really good and accessible way to charge up at quite affordable rates for residents at this marina. My name is Grant Kennedy, and uh, yeah, we started this company about a year ago and we've got our first site um, going live today, so it's yeah. awesome. So this is really interesting because um, there's a lot of a lot of houses in the UK that don't have access to, to driveways right. and then therefore don't have access to those cheap rates you get. Right. So what you're doing here is really quite interesting because um, it's a marina essentially, but no one's got their own driveway. So right. um, what did you first notice? Did people come up to you that said, look, I haven't got EV charging. Was it something you did off your own back? It was um, something I did off my own back. I saw a couple of uh, vehicles charging with cables coming out of second floor flat windows. Oh, really? And then when I did some research, there's 620 households on this site. Um, and with the way that all the new builds are going up at the moment, even some of the houses don't have adequate power to be able to supply the, the EV charger. So for me, it was a very simple equation to say, I've got all these households, you know, 1500 people to be able to supply. Yep. Um, and it then made me start to ask the wider question of actually, is this, is this gonna be, the same across multiple sites and it and it pretty much is and it's also a, a site that's an, an idea that's not not really going to be it's not really being tapped into at the moment so i think um it's a really interesting one at the moment there's actually only six charges in operation at this marina with more to come and actually they're all 22 kilowatt which means a lot of the high-end evs can take advantage of that really high charging rate and back to that ev6 i mentioned earlier that would only cost around 32 pounds on these chargers to charge overnight there are different rates which we'll get to a bit later but on the face of it this seems a pretty good idea for example in london you might have these lamppost chargers um, but they can be outrageously expensive to charge like 60p a kilowatt hour sort of thing um we had a conversation off camera earlier but you're doing something quite interesting in terms of pricing and try to make yep. it really fair for people because um, if it's just too expensive, people won't want to bother Correct. getting EVs. Correct. So what are you yeah. kind of doing in that pricing aspect? So I think the, the interesting thing is there's some, there's some amazing wholesale rates out there. Um, and as we continue to grow as a company, we can gain access to these wholesale rates, which means that essentially we can, we can drop that rate. Um, what, makes, what makes me incredibly sad is seeing the high rates that is happening at the moment in the, the public charging network um, that's out there. Um, I get it, you know, they've got the, the, the ability to be able to charge because of their locations and they've, they've kind of got us, but um, I think I feel, feel quite upset when I see those high rates because yeah. it's on par, if not more than uh, petrol. And that's yeah. not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get people to comfortably convert to, uh, to electric. Yeah, definitely. So what kind of um, price are you targeting? Um, so, for example, a person who lives in this area, what kind of price would they, you could expect them to pay? So, um, overnight, so any time between 5 o'clock uh, in the evening and 9 a.m. the following morning, they've got rates at 39 pence per kilowatt, which is superb. On 22 kilowatt um, chargers, um, it means that we're able to offer people the ability to charge their cars at a reasonable price, make a saving from having their electric vehicle. Um, and also, um, you know, to kind of, uh, you know, move into the electric world while still living in an apartment. We all know that EV adoption is on the rise. As of April 2025, there were 1.5 million EVs on the road, and that's always going to increase as we go on. In June 2025, for example, 39.1% of all brand new cars sold were fully electric. There are future plans for more kind of full uh, along. Whenever we install infrastructure, we install infrastructure for double. Um, that's also to help us with the, so the government grants are there to be able to take for future infrastructure. And what's really going to happen quite quickly is that um, as the demand goes up on these charging stations and more and more people are converting to electric, which we, we're really seeing yeah. traction happening this year, I think we're then going to have people knocking on my door to say, actually, we need 12 chargers there rather than the six. So we've put the future proof in there. We've put the cabling in there. It means that we're not going to have to go through the long, hard slog of, of digging up the ground again, but we can simply plug and play. Yeah. You know, we can literally plug in these extra posts. You might run into the problem of 
like people stopping here for too long overnight or yeah. just leaving it plugged in overnight or people parking their uh, petrol cars here. What kind of things have you got um, sort of set in motion to sort of help combat that? So we've got um, uh, working with IntelliPark um, and that is uh, a AMPR company using a really sophisticated 360 degree camera. So on one camera, it has all the bays um, on that. So the bays are protected. Um, a combination of if the vehicle um, is uh, non-EV and not charging, um, then it will receive a fine. It's got 15 minute um, grace period to sit here, okay. um, but it will receive a fine if it's in here. And the signage will, will kind of be making sure that people understand that. We, yeah. we don't want to be issuing tickets. We just want to keep the spaces yeah. clear. Um, and then also with the Monta app, we can set restrictions on there as well. So we can set idling time similar to what Tesla do yeah. on their charging network where we can set um, idling time. So if, if someone's got been more than four hours from the moment of charge, um, we'll, we'll be applying a, a small incremental charge to say, hey, you might want to be moving your car about now because um, you're blocking it for someone. So we believe within four hours, it's more than enough time to get the cars charged up on these 22 kilowatt chargers. So these chargers are by a brand called Evec and they're using the Monta EV app to charge. Um, the residents can use the Monta app, they can tap and go with a contactless card and all the pricing information is there um, and you can get access to different rates as well. Um, and just in terms of how the residents might activate these, do they get issued RFID cards? Is there an app or something? They can, uh, they can have RFID cards um, if that's the way they want to go. There's a small charge to that. Um, but if people just want to use the Monta app, Monta is a, a really good um, network um, app. Um, really, uh, you know, I've been, been trying quite a few recently and Monta really comes up as being a really good, um, really good option for, um, for these. So essentially come along. They've also got the pay to terminals on there. So it'll be simply tap and pay with your debit card. You can come up and do that or you can use the Monta app to get access to some of the cheaper rates. Have you had any, because I know this kind of area is sort of owned by quite a few different people. Please. What kind of challenges did you have with planning permission and trying to get this all off the ground? Yeah, so because we've got multiple freeholders, you've got landholders, uh, landowners, freeholders, um, and that makes it very clunky, a very clunky thing for us to, to do. And, um, and we just need to um, work through and meander through that process. Yeah. It's quite a slow process of us trying to um, get to speak to the right people, the decision makers. But actually, once we present the fact it's EV charging, this is what we're doing. Um, most of them are up for it because they're getting lots of pushback from residents at the moment saying they want it. Mm. But there's not their appetite to go and invest that money in there just yet. Fair enough, yeah. And yeah, the installations itself look really clean, really tidy. The cables aren't going to get in anyone's way, which is really good. So. Yeah. I think you've done a really good job so far. So yeah, Thanks yeah, so good. much. Thank yeah. you. So that's been a look at this very interesting charging solution here at the Apsley Marina in Hemel Hempstead. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Could you see this kind of thing taking off? Because it might be the fact that this is holding up, the, the lack of charging in these kind of residential areas is holding up EV adoption for some people. Um, I'm really interested to see what you think in the comments down below. If you like this sort of content, please subscribe to Interface Cars. My name's Alex and I'll see you again next time.